All right, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Design Theater. Today we're going to be looking at the artist Brom. This guy's a dark fantasy artist, and I just love his work. I, it has this feel to it that's very similar to Frank Rosetta uh, in the subject matter that he that he covers, but he has his own unique take on it that just feels, uh, I guess, so much more in line with my sensibilities. It's it's a little bit darker, but his work, it never goes too far into, into dark subject matter, it's, so it doesn't get like grotesque or anything if you've never seen his art, but his art is fascinatingly good. So we're going to go through and look at some of the illustrations today, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and announce now that on my YouTube channel, whenever this video is posted, I'm going to try to make these art of videos a little bit shorter. Um, so maybe more people will, will like them. So we're just going to look through the work here, but then I'm going to take one or two of these pieces and I'm going to do a longer video breaking down the compositional elements and whatnot. And that'll be in, uh, that'll also be on this channel. So I'll put that in the cards for sure. All right, so let's go through and let's look at some of this stuff. Really cool little gesture character he's got here. He does a lot of book covers, and his work is really well known for the Elric series, uh, which is what I, I think, which is what um, the Witcher series, the Witcher game series, is based off of. But yeah, I mean, we've got just these beautiful paintings in here. Stuff like this, I mean, it has this dark fantasy vibe to it. It's not too far away from Frazetta and H.R. Geiger. You know, he's got, he's got this kind of biomechanical thing going on, but he has his own interpretation of it uh, to where it's not like this direct ripoff. Uh, he just has these awesome character designs. Let's see what else do we have? Yeah, so these are more of the Elric pieces that he does. Oops, excuse me. My computer likes to zoom in randomly sometimes. Uh, so again, when we look at <laughs> when we look at image. And of course, it's going far away from me now. Okay. Okay. So, this goes back to what we were saying before about composition. It's something that has a good read to it. Maybe this will be one of the ones I do a more in-depth study of. Um, but what we want is we want something that's very readable from a distance. You know, this was probably a book cover for Elric the Michael Moore uh, fantasy series. And uh, so this was probably a cover or you know maybe the back of one of the books. And so this needs to be something that can instantly be recognized from across the room and grab the readers, uh, grab the potential reader's interest and pull him towards that book, right? And so we have this really awesome composition here, but it's very, the, the composition itself is very, uh, it's very circular, right? And it's, or, or it's very triangular. Um, you know, we can see this big triangle that kind of cuts through diagonally across the whole page, right? And then as we get closer to it, we can see more of it. kind of see that this this is the point of the triangle is up here at the top and like I've talked about before in previous episodes you know he has he's he's illustrating a scene right before or right after something happened those are the biggest points of drama because 
it puts a question in the viewer's mind, what is about to happen? What's going to happen next, right? So we see that he's made a swipe at this uh, demon-looking character, uh, and he's, it looks like he's pulling back again to make another swipe, which we can see that he's already made a swipe because we have blood that's coming from this monster, and it's leading us to him, right? We have this kind of like converging line here. And then we have... We have a lot of diagonals going on here. Yeah, this will be one of the ones I do a longer study for. But the hu the hunch is already put into your mind. Uh, what is going on back here with these with these other two uh, monsters? You know, like what's got, what what is about to happen? So there's a there's a question that's posed in your mind, right? Uh, this one just has really good flow to it. You know, we can kind of see this zigzag kind of motion that's coming up and goes into her. And you could almost say, in a sense, it goes over here and then it comes up. And then we have a straight. And of course, the straight does not venture too far off from the wings that kind of keep it in this loop. You know, you could almost think about it like that. This is a nice curve that keeps us in the... Some nice little loop there. Let's see what else do we have. Let's do a couple more. And then I'll go ahead and close this video out. Yeah, I mean, like, his stuff has such a grit to it. It's very cool. Again, this is very, this is very H.R. Geiger-esque, but you can tell that he is paying tribute, in a sense, to Geiger with a piece like this. Um, but he's showing it enough respect that it's not a it's not like a ripoff. Like you can tell that Geiger is he's a fan of Geiger. Well, I've also done a video for on these on this design theater, right? But he also has other influences. Like this looks like an influence from 1950s, <laughs> like a vampire movies from the. Yeah, from like the 60s or 70s or something. It kind of has an older punk rock kind of feel. And he's got stuff like this. This would also be something to do a good study of. All right, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. And then I'm going to be doing a longer study of some of his works and showing how to break him down uh, on another video. I'll have those in, that in the cards as well. Uh, thanks guys for watching. Uh, we'll be looking at some more artists tomorrow, same time, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, please like and subscribe and leave a comment if there's an artist you'd like for me to look at. Take it easy.